you'll often hear me describing the Guide Rail series as exploring the world's steam-powered history. But we haven't yet talked about the objectively best steam invention ever, the kettle. There are some other key innovations that change the world significantly, which I suppose we'll talk about as well. But they don't make tea. Tea, coffee, and my supporters on Patreon are what powers me to make videos. So ahead of the 200th anniversary of Steam Railways, I'm going to tell you all the complete history of what came before. The earliest use of a teapot came from a place in modern-day Iraq with pot in the name, sometime between 3500 to 2000 BC. I haven't been to the year 3000 BC, but not much has changed. We still boil water. It was used for cooking, whilst in China they instead were boiling water to remove impurities. Drinking this cleaner water became ritualistic in Asia and green tea leaves were added to give it more flavour. The kettle was born. Originally, containers were made from wood, but later versions, sitting directly above fires, were made from bronze and cast iron. Cowboys in America began using copper as it was better suited to the small temporary campfires that they used. Hilariously, the first electric kettle came along in 1891, from the suitably named Carpenter Electrical Company in Chicago. For some reason, America has forgotten this because they barely use electric kettles now, and the whistling stovetop variety is still more common. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the world, 21st century kettles are evolving unnecessarily, controlled by apps on smartphones to measure the exact water temperature but they're still doing the same job as many thousands of years before, boiling water. That water holds thermal energy, with the potential to become kinetic energy if pressured to do so. Long before the age of the chai latte, steam was being harnessed to do things. But in 30 to 20 BC, the Roman Vitruvius didn't quite know what to do with it. This device, later named the Aeolipile, after the Greek god of air and wind, Aeolus, used steam from two jets to propel a sphere. We don't really know what use this had. That same concept was being used to push rotary blades to roast meat in the mid-1500s in Ottoman Egypt. But it was the 1670s where really useful engines began to be cooked up. Physicists Dennis Papin of France and the Dutch Christian Huygens created the pressure cooker. Yum. The world was more concerned with good food and their fascination for vacuum power rather than steam. That is, the creation of a vacuum and the subsequent forces of atmospheric pressure. Steam was made within a cylinder, and then cooled back into water, creating an empty space that was weaker than the atmosphere around it. This pressure could then push down on a cylinder. Thomas came along in 1698 to develop this concept further. And another newcomer, also named Thomas, in 1712 to put this power to some use. He connected a wooden beam to a pump that could drain flooded underground mines in Britain. On the other side of the beam was a rudimentary open-topped cylinder. Steam at the bottom condensed to create a vacuum which pulled the piston down due to the greater power of the atmospheric pressure above, thus pulling on the beam. It was a slow process with power only being utilised on one stroke, whilst the whole system reset and steam was again built up. All in all, about 80% of the steam was wasted. 
Scottish inventor James Watt realised this in 1759 and adapted the design with a separate condenser so that the steam could cool separately from the main cylinder. That greatly helped it to retain its working temperature. I have just realised that this might be really boring to some of you who are just here for the trains. I'll get onto that soon. But you see, what you need to understand is that in these days, things weren't boring. The technology to bore perfectly round cylinders wasn't around in Newcomen's time. But what worked to seal both sides of the cylinder, so that each part of it could be fed steam. He and Matthew Bolton designed stationary engines that could power a flywheel and therefore produce more consistent speed and power. The ages of the beam engine and steam engine were born. Bolton and Watt did not trust ideas of using strong steam to power machines or even vehicles and used their company's patent to reject or claim royalties on several attempts. By 1800, Richard Trevithick didn't care about this pressure and went ahead and created the first high pressure steam engine anyway. He focused on creating better quality boilers that could produce higher temperatures of steam, whilst also sustaining their own weight. You'd think by sticking some wheels on that the dawn of the train came first, but it was road vehicles that he experimented with, to limited success. In 1801, he demonstrated Puffing Devil, going up a hill, named after the sound of exhausting steam from the cylinder and upper chimney, something he realised greatly assisted the draught on the fire. This road vehicle hit a bump in the road three days later and burnt itself dry. But it did fire his confidence in using steam for propulsion. The next year, it is argued that he made an engine to run on rails at the Colebrookdale Iron Company. But its claim as the first ever railway engine is based on very loose evidence, and we don't even know if it had a name. The likely first ever loco ran the Penny Darren Tramway the same year, carrying 10 tonnes of iron ore for nearly 10 miles as a bet. So spiralled years of experimentation to use steam within a confined space to push wheels of all kinds. In 1825, the Stockton and Darlington became the first public railway. It was run by George Stevenson's optimistically named Locomotion No. 1 and Hope. Four years later, and his son, Robert Stevenson, competed with Rocket in the Rainhill Trials which would set the standard of designs used on the world's first intercity railway, the Liverpool and Manchester. The blueprint for almost all locomotives that followed was made. But what about beyond the rails? The wheels and cogs of the Industrial Revolution began turning from a variety of new innovations. But most crucially to this was employing steam as a source of mechanical power. Once the forces of pistons could be consistently transferred into rotary motion, gradually everything that could have a machine-powered alternative did. Cotton mills are perhaps the most remembered, with one engine able to power whole rooms of machines by the use of cam belts. In iron making, steam pumped water to water wheels and then blasted drafts of air to assist the furnaces. Horses were replaced on farms and in breweries. Out on the oceans, Charles Parsons developed the steam turbine in 1884. And I've talked about the revolutions that that caused in my documentary on RMS Mauritania. The barely any of you bothered watching. Later alternatives like internal combustion engines and electricity came along, of course. But steam is very much still commonplace today. It is still essential in the textiles industry, food production and heating. 
As for transport, the development of Richard Trevithick's locomotive never ceased. And in 2024, these are examples of brand new contemporary steam engines. Ah, uh, uh, no, um, these are old designs built again in the modern day, but still, there's many looking back at the age of steam for future inspiration. Several small firms across the world are experimenting with steam as a sustainable source of power, often using biomass as an eco-friendly fuel. Methods of heating the water come in all shapes and sizes, but many share the belief that this plentiful resource should be replacing fossil fuels once and for all. That is the future of steam though, so we'll have to talk about that in a future video, because this one has really only glanced at the countless uses of vaporised water up until today. Subscribe to see more of the series Guide Rail, where we have a new episode on the first Friday of the month dedicated to exploring the steam-powered history of the world. What is the most absurd steam-powered contraption that you can think of? Let me know in the comments because I'm sure that there are many crazy inventions out there. If you've enjoyed this, perhaps consider supporting the channel on Patreon for a bundle of rewards, and next time you put the kettle on, Think about all of the things that those little wisps of steam can achieve. I hope it inspires you to realise all that you can achieve as well. Goodbye for now, my dear friends. Many thanks to my brilliant channel patrons Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Random Thomas Fan, Dark White 73, Andrew Dyack, and Jude 72.